What is going on, my friends? I am Eddie Barrett with Atomic Auto Works, and we are a customization and restoration shop located in New England. And if you are a new subscriber, welcome to our channel. And if you are a returning subscriber and friend, welcome back. Thanks for coming back. Today, we're gonna to be working on a tea bucket interior. So you're gonna have some really weird shots today because my um, tripod broke and almost dropped my camera on the phone. So I need parts for that. So you're up on a ladder right now. It's kind of ghetto. I, I wanted to kind of do a video and show an installation how to install one of these interior kits. This is one of the old style interior kits, kind of like you would see with Total Performance and when they used to be in Wallingford, Connecticut, we used to do a lot of work with them. So we're very familiar. I've done, I don't even know about hundreds upon hundreds of these interior installs. And there's tricks and tr ways to do it. And I wanted to, like I said, wanted to do a, a video showing you how to do it step by step, which we just can't, we're just out of time. We're so busy this week. But I did want to go through and give you some pointers. Um, obviously when you're doing these kits at home, they're, they're not easy. I watched, I've seen over the years, you know, a lot of people attempt these and a lot of people do poor jobs on them. It's all about taking your time, not rushing them and taking baby steps. So if you have this car and you have this interior kit and you are trying to install it yourself, you always want to make sure that you have all your convertible top provisions installed. So we already have this mounted metal on the other side, drilled and tapped, ready for convertible top bows. One of the big things you want to do is you want to make sure that you have your, obviously your foam height for your rear bolster uh, for the roll, right with your bottom tack strip. You want to make sure you put your tack strip in and it's even on both sides of the cars. You want to make sure it's even from the top fiberglass um, on both sides to the bottom where your tack strip is. This way, both sides are the same. You also want to make sure you get it perfectly straight. And when you're putting in the tack strips, you want to make sure that the tack strips, as you screw them in, they're going to want to have like a, a bump. So you want to screw to that tack strip and you put a lot of screws in there so that every like half inch there's a screw. And that'll make sure that that tack strip lays flat. And if that's flat, when we go to pull this up afterwards, we're going to have a nice crisp edge across the bottom here. Now, when you're putting your roll in, like some people think you take this, you take your vinyl and your and your so foam, your half inch so foam, and pull them together. You never want to do that. It'll make this a miserable job. It'll come out like hell, and um, you'll end up having to redo it or pay someone to redo it. What you want to do is you're going to take your roll and you're going to pull it. Now we're use we use a stapler. Um, we have an, obviously an air stapler here, and in the kits that you get, a lot of times they'll give you like little um, tacks or you know uh, upholstery tacks. You gotta hammer those in and then you gotta take them out. What you wanna do is you wanna take this roll and pull it, you wanna pull it tight and kinda, I'll like roll the foam as you go and you'll get it in here and on the back channel here, I don't know if you can see it, which I'll show you, there's a tack strip. That tack strip you have to staple into. So these staples that we're putting into now are just temporary staples. We're gonna put a couple in here, then we move to over here, we're gonna pull this tight, but not too tight, smack it a little bit, get it over, put a few staples in here and kinda do that all the way around this whole roll. As we do that, what we're doing is we're pulling it tight. If you were to try to pull this one shot, one, when you put your staples in, it's just gonna rip right out. And also you'll never be able to get it pulled as tight as you need. And especially in these corners, you can see here, I just started pulling this and there's bumps in this corner. We have to make sure we're gonna start pulling this out like this. So we're gonna grab here, pull this here, grab here, pull this here, and then grab here, pull this this way and get rid of any of those bumps that are in that, your roll in your uh, cell phone. Once that's done, we're gonna go through and pull the vinyl around and start working that you know as you've heard me say in other videos millions of times you always start from your center work your way out so you want to make sure that you start in your center you mark your so foam on the back side this what you see it's marked here the material we have a cut in it where it's marked so we know exactly where our centers is and everything is completely symmetrical if your car body is not symmetrical which a lot of these t-bucket kits are not symmetrical then you're in for a little bit of a ride because you have to make it look symmetrical so when you pull that seam around which is this seam here you want to make sure they look good on both sides. Um, another thing is don't be intimidated. When you go to pull this stuff around, it's going to feel like it's going to be an impossible task because you're going to start off and you're going to pull it and be like, oh man, look at this wrinkle. Just like I said, once you get this tight where you want it, which is, I probably have to pull this back another, I would say a good inch. And then you want to make sure that, see how it's still wavy because we didn't pull, pull the whole thing. Once we get this whole roll even and nice, then we're going to begin doing that with the vinyl and it's the same process. You're going to pull it tight, but not too tight. Put a few temporary staples in there, go all the way around and then take a couple staples out, pull it a little tighter, move to the next one, take them out, pull a little tighter and kind of go all the way around. And at the end, you will have a finished, nice looking interior kit. 
So on this one today, we're only worried about getting the roll in because we need to get the center, uh, the, get the steering column in a location where we think we're gonna want it because uh, this one, the customer who purchased this online wants the steering column, he wants tilt wheel. He doesn't want it like the normal tea bucket. It's like a like big bird. It's a big steering wheel in front of you and you kind of go like that. So this will allow them to sit a little bit more in the vehicle, but it is still a tight squeeze. So we have a lot of measurement and height adjustments to do. Uh, the seat cushion itself, we only put like two or three layers of foam on there. And we're gonna kind of gradually go up until we get it in a position that we think it's gonna be comfortable. Hopefully this video helps out. I know it's not gonna be a big video for everybody because not everybody's installing one of these T-Bucket interior kits. However, if you are, you know, that's some, some, like, uh, some tips on that stage of putting your roll in. And what we'll, we'll do in the future of real video doing this step-by-step. -step. Like I said, we're just in a rush to get this, not a rush, but we just have to get this one done and we are very busy right now. So as you can see here, our original poles were way back here. And then with each pull, it gets a little closer and a little closer, and this gets narrower and narrower. I don't know if you could tell here, looking down at how it's kind of still bumpy. And that's because one, we're not fully stapled in here. Also on these, what's difficult is we have to put our staples in to this little tack strip under here. Can you see that? That's where we're stapling to. So we have to put our so foam gets stapled here, then our vinyl, our vinyl is going to get stapled on there. And then at the end, we have to put a hydum, which is a piece of material that you staple through, but it hides the staples all the way around the edge here. So there's a lot of staples that have to go into this one little edge. So I'm going to show you another trick. I wish I knew this trick 20 years ago when I was installing lots and lots of these interiors and tea buckets for like total performance and some other companies. Check this out. Before you pull your so foam, put some real thin plastic over the foam and that allows us to slide a lot easier without pulling the bottom of the foam if you don't put this down the foam will grip together and you'll end up pulling down here and it's really tough so this kind of lets get a nice sliding roll so you can see here the roll on that side that's in the driver's side we really didn't get through pulling that yet and we're over here and we're down to one little tiny crease which is actually more or less a crease in the so foam so what seemed impossible like if you look at our first pulls here, when I was pulling this, it pulled really hard. But by the time we worked it back and forth and back and forth, now we're way tighter here. And what I like to do is once you get all the wrinkles out, you technically can keep pulling this until this is flat like Stanley. And you don't really want that. You want to have a nice rounded bolster. So what I do is I pull it until I get the wrinkles out of here. And then we're going to start working it and just making sure when we sight this, it's the same radius and there's no wobbles in it. And then once we have that, we're good to put the vinyl on. See with the roll, what seemed impossible a little while ago is getting very close. We just have to work those couple of wrinkles out. You know, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get with these seat bucket interiors is people ask, is it better to install the interior before or after the body work's done and painted? And if you watch my other videos, I kind of explain a little bit about it. We've done it either way. It's always nicer to do it when it's in primer for us because we could, we're able to, if there is a problem, deal with it very easily. I would say, one out of every 20 to 30 cars that we did that were painted had a problem. You know, a lot of that was the old school way we used to do it. Instead of screwing the tack strips in, they were always nailed in. And if a nail went down and hit a piece of wood and it hit a knot, it would shoot out the side of the car. Then you'd have to fix it and body work it, which was always a nightmare. So it's always easier for us this way, just the case, because you know, you could have zero problems versus you know, one out of every 20, 30 cars. And also the other thing is if someone has a bodywork car and you put the interior in it and then you bring it to a shop that doesn't really mask it off well, you know, then you get overspray in your interior and that's a nightmare. So I guess technically if you had a white interior and you're painting the car like red or black, you're probably better off risking it to take the chance of putting the interior in afterwards because overspray would just ruin that interior. But most of the interiors are black and then, um, you know, easy to clean up. What I'm doing right now is I'm going through and just cleaning this up. I Use bigger staples because the bigger staples bounce back. You see that? So then it's easier to remove. Now I'm going to put smaller staples in here now that it's pulled tight consistently. So what I do is I pull like two to four staples out. You don't want to do more than that because if you do, it, it could shoot backwards and you're going, you're going backwards. Whenever you pull the staples out, you always want to keep your hand firm. You want to be holding this because if you're not, it could go back. Now I'm just going to roll this back here, that little bit, and staple her in. Okay, so you can see we did the first initial pull of the interior same thing as the body roll with the foam roll you don't want to overstretch it so we just kind of pull it over and you can see there's still the same thing there's wrinkles in the corners 
So now we're just going to begin the same process, heating it, removing a few staples. Well, we didn't heat the foam, but <laughs> we're going to be heating the vinyl and then we'll remove a few staples and then we'll staple them in and we'll keep going back and forth all the way around many, many times. Thank you for watching. Also, if you like our motorcycle content, check out Atomic Cycle Works on YouTube. If you like our truck stuff, check out, check out Atomic Truck Works on YouTube. And if you like our car stuff, you're in the right place, Atomic Auto Works. Thank you very much. Like, share, follow, subscribe. Thanks.